Hi friends, it's Uncle Gems, and I'm playing Assassin's Creed 4 Black Flag with Steve Bonnet. Okay, my mission is to follow Steve. It shouldn't be too hard, I can't see him getting away from me. Gracious! What a revolting sight! Well, they don't take kindly to pirates here, do they? Wonder yeah. how many stolen reals bought these men this ship. perch. I wanna look at his these ship. Men this perch. It's supposed to be the revenge. It's supposed to be a ten gun sloop, but I don't see any guns. Maybe he hasn't equipped it yet. But the masthead is cool. The unicorn? That is awesome. Look, it's a pretty ship. It could be the revenge. Maybe he just hasn't equipped it yet. Okay. Follow Steve. We're following Steve. Fish. Fish market. This guy's playing Jenga. Alguna vez has tenido dos zorras en tu madriguera? Hola, ladies. You don't know these women, do you? No. They charge oh. money for that kind of privilege. Look, see the blue star on the map? For every hour of see the blue above them? To meet them. No, goodness, no, I'm, I'm a married man. These are the married men and their four-day mates. Dancing ladies. Por eso tus manos? So, the database. They say about... People. Answers. Euphemism for women employed in the world's oldest profession. But for a handful of coins, dancers can be employed to distract guards and interfere with ongoing fights. <gasps> so you can hire them to distract for you. And they might also have some incredible stories of their own to tell if only you would bother to listen. <laughs> yeah, I'm watching them dance. I'm not listening to them. Oh, Steve. Oh, Harbor Master, that's good to know. Aha! Here's a purveyor of personal defenses. Oh, weapon structure. Tavern. This rusty razor's nothing to admire. I have to remember this place. I have here a mere kitten walking so close upon you. Perhaps a small dagger would suit me. Let's see what he's selling. Maybe I'll buy a sword too. We'll both jump rank. Oh, we'll be quite the pair, you and I. Twin devils. Hello, baby. Hmm. Lend us a few reals, then. I did save your skin. Ah, uh, of course. Cheers. Swords. Swords, 1600 reals. Can I get some guns? I can't go back. I guess I can only get swords. So I have to buy one. Okay, I'll take that. That's a better fit for me. I'll okay. be fair. I had only enough for a small oh. knife, sadly. Still, it'll do in a pinch. Okay, I know Steve may seem like an unlikely cutthroat right now, but he was actually a very famous Barbadian pirate. Although at this time he was still mostly a trader. You see the crates he's carrying? They're full of sugar from his plantation. And in the last episode, you heard him talking about his plantation and enjoying being at sea with the tug of wind in his hair. No, not Barbarian, Barbadian. Because he was from Barbados. Okay, Steve Bonnet was born 1688 to a wealthy plantation owner near Bridgetown, Barbados, which is the easternmost island of the Lesser Antilles. At the age of seven, his parents died, and he inherited the 400-acre sugar plantation, which, due to his afforded education, he managed to return to a profitable state by his teens. And because of his jovial manner, education, and wealthy upbringing, he was often referred to as the Gentleman Pirate. So he married early and started out having a family right away, three sons and a daughter. But he never found domestic life enjoyable, as, and as a way of coping with his unhappiness, he dreamed of sailing around the world, living free of his obligations. I guess having to take over the family business at seven years old Missing out on a childhood can take a toll on someone after a while. He did also hold the rank of Major with the Barbados Militia, probably due to his land holdings 
and since deterring slave revolts was an important function of the militia, although it's not recorded that he ever did any fighting. Because see, there are plantations all over the Caribbean, because sugar and tobacco grow very well in that climate. Sugar, molasses, rum. And we're huge commodities in Europe, where they don't grow very well. And with slave labor, plantations were also hugely profitable. Well, his firstborn died in early childhood in 1712, which further troubled him, adding to his unhappy marriage. And around 1717, during some sort of middle age crisis and having no knowledge of shipboard life, he suddenly decided to undertake the adventure of piracy, bid his family, his fortune, his former life goodbye, and never returned home. Anyway, unlike most pirates, Bonnet actually bought his ship a 10-gun sloop he named Revenge, and hired a crew, which, due to his total incompetency as a seaman, he kept content by paying them very well. See, tradition was, the crew were paid by merely splitting the loot that they plundered. And it's rumored that in order to maintain a part of his life of comfort, he installed a full library in the captain's quarters of the Revenge, dressed in fine pajamas, smoking jackets, detailed frocks, and the white wigs popular at the time. Which brings us to where we are now. Steed meets Edward in Cape Bonavista, where he is waylaid by a British warship who suspected he was a pirate involved in a nearby skirmish, which was actually Edward's ship. Which brings us to Havana! Oh, so anyway, about Steed. He later ventured up the eastern seaboard off Virginia and the Carolinas and merely due to the experience of his quartermaster and first officer, managed to plunder a few ships and burned a couple of Barbadian ships so they couldn't send word of his exploits back home to his home island. But see, pirates were tolerated somewhat in the New England ter territories because they brought goods to trade and sell. Yes, this is all true. I didn't make it up. You can look it up in uh, Smithsonian.com or Charleston History or Famous Pirates in History or well, in late 1717, he met Benjamin Hortigold and Edward Teach, Blackbeard, and sailed for a while with Blackbeard's fleet, during which he was involved in the famous blockade of Charleston in early 1718. However, they soon had a falling out and finally returned to his own ship. So now, with more sea experience and being hardened by life with pirates, in the summer of 1718, he easily plundered 11 ships off the Virginia coast, keeping the last two and adding them to his fleet. Well, while repairing in a small port in North Carolina, he plundered a local ship, and the news reached Charleston. See, other pirates like Charles Vane were also causing a lot of trouble in the region, and the local authorities decided to hire a ship owner, Colonel William Rett, to hunt pirates. In August 1718, Bonnet entered the Cape Fear River and anchored near the mouth of a small waterway known today as Bennett's Creek. See, his ship was leaking and still in need of further repairs. And according to record, he also intended to wait out the hurricane season there. But by the end of August, word got out that a pirate fleet was moored in the Cape Fear River and with two eight-gun sloops and 130 militia, in September, Colonel Rett arrived at the Cape Fear outlet, but ran aground at the river's mouth, allowing Bonnet's crew to see that the ships were hostile. And the sun had set by the time the, the tide lifted red ships off the river bottom. So during the night, Bonnet brought all 46 of his crew from the three ships onto his ship, planning to fight their way out to sea in the morning, rather than risk escaping up the river's narrow channels in the dark. So at daybreak, September 27th, 1718, Bonnet set sail toward Rett's two ships and all three opened fire beginning the famous battle of the Cape Fear River. Colonel Rett's ship split, trying to bracket the revenge. And trying to avoid the trap, Bonnet steered close to the river's western shore to go around, but ran aground. Rett's closing ship also ran aground, leaving only his in the range of the revenge. So now, with all three ships immobilized, the ensuing battle lasted five hours. Bonnet's crew had the advantage as their deck was healed away from Rhett's ship, 
giving them cover as Rep's ships were stranded, tilted toward the Revenge, exposing their duck deck to musket fire. But the game was finally over when the rising tide lifted Rep's ships first, free first, leaving the Revenge stranded. And outnumbered almost three to one, but its crew surrendered and all returned to Charleston on October 3rd. Now, while awaiting trial, and rumored to have been helped by local merchants, but it escaped on October 24th, but lack of supplies soon led to his recapture. You see, he had a lot of support from the local business owners. And it's interesting to note, while awaiting trial, the civil population rallied around him and some sort of civil uprising, uprising in his support took place in the city, an event the local authorities would describe as having nearly resulted in the burning of the town and overthrow of the government. Wow. Anyway, he was formally charged with only two acts of piracy, but ultimately sent, sentenced to death. Awaiting execution, Bonnet appealed to Governor Charles Johnson for clemency, even promising to have his own arms and legs cut off in assurance he would never again commit piracy. And apparently, his extensive begging of Governor for forgiveness was so successful in swaying the heart of the Governor and the women of Carolina that his execution was delayed seven times. Wow, sounds like a good, view, good movie here. But he was eventually hanged at White Point Garden, Charleston, on December 10th, 1718. Anyway, I guess we'll never really know who he was or what he was like. I mean, it was 300 years ago. Oh, and Bonnet was supposedly known for being one of the few pirates who enjoyed making his prisoners walk the plank. Although I can't substantiate that as no contemporary source makes any mention of Bonnet forcing prisoners to walk the plank. And I don't think that practice was common until much later. You see, prisoners could be sold as slaves, so it wasn't worth killing him. I don't know. He did become a little ruthless, known for stalking the deck with a pistol in case you weren't working fast enough or trying to flee from battle. Oh, and Bonnet's flag was recognized as a skull over longbone with a hardened dagger. Okay, play. Talk to me, Steed. Oh, puffer duff. I have led us astray, Duncan. Oh, no matter. I'll get us a better view. What are we looking for? Uh, a tavern with a sort of courtyard interior. Oh, I have to go up there and take a look around. Okay. I can do that. I'm good at climbing. Every finger's a fish hook. That's how you tell a true sailor. I'm a good at climbing. There we go. Up, up. Up, up and away. Up, up. Okay. Oops, let's go over here. There we go. I think I see the place. We're not far. Okay, let's go back to find speed. Where did he go? Not there? He left his train of sugar. What did he do? Is, is it a glitch maybe? Look, I'm doing the Captain Morgan on top of a crate of sugar. <laughs> Alright, let's go back up and find him. I reached the top of the church tower. Maybe I did. I, I skipped something. I think. Oh, oh, okay. I guess we got to synchronize. All right, then we're gonna synchronize. Hello, bird. Havana. That must be the governor's uh, house. Hang tight! Are you serious? This guy just seems to leap of faith. Oh, really? I gotta jump into that hay barrel or that hay wagon. Whoa! 
I can't breathe. I think my heart Stop or I'll break your knees when I catch you. I think Steve just attracts trouble. Which way did he go? Which way did he go? Come back. I'm close at heel, said bird. I'm gonna get to Did he fall down? Oh, he knocked somebody down. Oops, Here I come! Buddy. Don't make me chase you into the harbor! I will, you know. Oops. Okay, on the roof, that's fine. I can do this. Oh, blast ya! Oh, oh. You robbed the wrong man, mate. I fell on dangerous friends. <laughs> the roof. I didn't really mean to do that. Okay. Sorry, guys, relax. I'm a professional. Is there a body in the Oh, sorry, chap. Oh, 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 I am. That felt was no fuss. You gonna leave oh, the sugar yeah. here? I think I just walked on it. Ah, we've arrived. Rum for all. And all for rum. Oh, he went back for his crate. Fancy meeting a Welshman. Deep in Dago country. I'm English myself. Biding my time till the next war comes to the well service. My country. Lucky King George. Having a piss pot like you flying his flag. Oh! Oi! Skulk! I've seen your face before. You mates with them pirates down in Nassau. Shut your fucking gob or I'll fill it with shot, you hear me? <laughs> Edward! Then I'm back off. Okay. I'm in Havana a day and I'm already in a bar fight. I'm in Havana an hour and I'm already in a bar fight. You wanna dust up? I'll give you one. Okay, I can I can do whatever you want. I don't oh it's gonna hurt in the morning. Come on, lads. I've seen I, bigger arms on a bird. I don't wanna fight you, drunken fool. Come on, go to hit me. Go ahead. Down. Ooh, two with one. Haha. <laughs> Stay down. I'm telling you. Alright, we can do this. I can do this all day. There you go. Knock you down. Okay. Do this? Alright, we're gonna do this now. <sighs> Four, five on one. Come on, give it to me. Oh, I got all four of them. It's like bowling for bar flies. Alright, let's get this over with. Come on, we're going down. One more. Come on. Come on, two, come on. All the way. Come on, just uh, hit me. Come on, try to hit me. 
Hey, I didn't do this. This is not my fault. Smoke bombs. Smoke bombs. I wonder if I get sticky bombs. Smoke bombs. Run, run, run. Run, Forrest, run! Turn around the corner. Turn the corner, there we go. Excuse me. No right here. They didn't see me coming. Looks like a whole blockade. They didn't see me. Okay, so can I get out of here while I'm not looking? Do I see the PC here? Alright, let's go for it. No, they saw me. Alright, I gotta find someone to hide. Someone to hide. Dig! Around the corner. Oh, 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 oh yeah, let's go. Up, up, up. On the roof. On the roof. Hurry, up. Up. Keep climbing. Keep climbing. Okay, so let's go. Oops, I didn't mean to do that. Alright, that's alright. Cross roof. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Keep going, keep going. I'm losing them. I'm losing them. I lost him. Okay, this is getting interesting. I can't wait to play some more, but I'm going to pause it here. I think I'm going to go explore around Havana a little bit before I go back and find what happened to Steve. I'll do some shopping and... Oh, look, a kitty. A little kitty. A little kitty. Oh, he likes me. Yeah, he likes me. Okay. Hey, this has been fun. Thanks for watching. If you like this uh, series, give me a big thumbs up. And if you have any suggestions, want to say anything, leave the comments down below. And I'll see you in the next video. And you have a great day!